the inmates have to help me to the bathroom. And I said, well, you need to tell him you need to go to the doctor. And he said, I have. I've been telling him since yesterday. He didn't deserve to die in prison for a disease that had no place in the prison system. Last week, a state prison inmate housed at the San Pete County Jail died of COVID-19. And in the last year, 18 inmates have died in COVID outbreaks at Utah's two state prisons. That's a rate five times higher than the rest of Utah. While the Department of Corrections has not disclosed names, a joint investigation by Fox 13 News and the Salt Lake Tribune confirmed the identities of the 18 and found inmates waited for medical care while their families were left wondering what was happening. Here's Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle. It would have been like around the first Wednesday in November, um, he had called me and he sounded like he was running a marathon, like he could not catch his breath. Brandy Gillespie's husband, Jerry, was convicted in Cache County of assault and unlawful weapons possession. He was serving a sentence of up to five years at the Utah State Prison in Draper when a COVID-19 outbreak arrived in the fall. He said, I can't breathe. He, and, and he said, I, I think I'm dying. I can't hold my balance. I have to walk against the wall. Um, he said, the inmates have to help me to the bathroom. And I said, well, you need to tell him you need to go to the doctor. And he said, I have, I've been telling him since yesterday. <laughs> and he says, they basically tell you like, um, like you've told us if you keep telling us, you're gonna lose your levels, like your privileges and stuff. One of the Utah prison inmates who died of COVID was Stephen Walker, a 70 year old Vietnam War veteran who shot his wife to death in 2006. He was, had been wishing and, and calling for medical for about three days. Patrick Nacy was an inmate in the unit infected. He spoke by telephone to the Salt Lake Tribune's Jessica Miller. And then he got goofy that night that, mm -hmm. they, that they took him out. That was about night number three, and uh, they took him out, and uh, that was the last time we all saw him. And you said, like, his fingers were blue, right? Yes. Yeah, on his left hand, his fingers were blue. My father, I mean, he took uh, English classes, but he could never understand anything that uh, anybody was saying. Ricardo Bueno and his sister, Nahir Strout, said they struggled to get information about their father, Jaime Bueno Vasquez. He was in the prison in Gunnison serving a life sentence for child sex abuse. In November and December, the family says, their father was coughing, then lost his sense of taste and smell. Tuesday morning, I received a call from a nurse at an ICU unit in Salt Lake City at the University Hospital. And she's telling me that my dad has got two hours left to leave. I asked the nurse, what was my dad dying of? And they, she says, he's got COVID. Bueno actually lived another 10 days. He died in the infirmary at the Draper Prison at age 86. These are people's loved ones. Yeah, they make mistakes. Some of them were huge. Didn't deserve to die in prison for a disease that had no place in the prison system. Penitentiaries across the country had COVID-19 outbreaks early in the pandemic. The outbreaks at Utah's prisons happened after the state had time to establish defenses. These documents explain what went wrong. According to a report from the CDC, a dental care provider brought COVID-19 into the Draper prison in September 2020. The prison was notified three days later, and the report says two of 10 inmates who came into contact with a dental worker later tested positive. Well, the whole dorm really was exposed to those two, and then, um, and then the one dorm got moved all over the place. We got moved all over. Uh, that's when uh, uh, the one upstairs died uh, that I found, and um, the, uh, uh, they just moved everybody all over the place. So right now, we're assembling a team uh, of, uh, of people to go in and do some mass testing. The CDC report leaves open the possibility other prison staff brought the virus into the prison too. As of earlier this month, about 1,800 inmates at the Draper prison and 1,100 inmates at the Gunnison prison had tested positive. 
The deadliest outbreak happened in Draper's Ochre 5 facility, which housed geriatric and medically fragile inmates, like Jerry Gillespie. He was a diabetic as well as being in um, heart and double lung failure. And then he said, and then people are testing positive in other units, and instead of just locking things down, they start coming in saying, okay, we're gonna put you in here, and we're gonna take you out and put you over there. And, and then he said, why are you putting people from areas that have been exposed in here with us? Emails from the Salt Lake County Health Department show other inmates' families were complaining about unsanitary conditions at the state prison. Some of the quarantine protocols that the Department of Corrections used effectively spread the virus once it was already inside. That was Sarah Wolovic is a lawyer with the ACLU of Utah who has been conducting her own inquiry into what happened. And they would take people who were exposed but had tested negative and consolidate them with individuals who were exposed and negative from other housing units. And the problem is that these rapid tests did have a substantial false negative rate. And the CDC was not recommending this type of moving people around. Less is known about what started the outbreak at the Gunnison prison, where Bueno was housed, though a Department of Corrections spokeswoman says it appears to have come from staff or new inmates. The Gillespie and Bueno families contend the lack of information was an effort to downplay the severity of the outbreaks at the prisons. Gillespie points to this email, from Tony Washington, who oversees medical care for the Department of Corrections. But in summary, it basically said, we have no information or record that Jerry was in any kind of condition that you reported. Um, he's fine. He's in the infirmary as a precautionary to receive oxygen. Well, then Saturday, the very next day rolls around, and, and I go out to my, my mailbox, and I have a letter from an inmate at the Utah State Prison. I think he's having trouble walking. Kenneth Nelson wrote the letter. He and Jerry Gillespie were friends in the prison, and he wanted to let Brandy know that Jerry had, in fact, been moved to a hospital. Nelson choked up, telling us about Jerry's last day at the prison. I was just going over the phone when Matt, when Matt was coming in. I see him hurrying down the sidewalk. I tried to stop him to, to let him know that Jerry needed his help. He told me, no, I had to we have an emergency. I have to go. And he kept going. So I turned around and started back down. I seen Jerry was on the ground in front of the back door of the door. Mike Hedden was the director of the Utah Department of Corrections at the start of the pandemic. When information is not provided, it isn't because we're trying to keep information from getting out. More commonly, it's due to delays that are just inherent in testing and receiving test results. Or we're taking the necessary time to ensure that we fully understand the various situations to avoid confusion or any misinformation. Mis mis in November, as the outbreaks at the prisons were worsening, Haddon left the Corrections Department and took over the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole. He declined an interview request from Fox 13 and the Salt Lake Tribune. From all of the reviews, the Department of Corrections followed best practices. Brian Nielsen is the current director of the Utah Department of Corrections. He would not talk about specific inmates. Some of the inmate letters um, we've reviewed, I mean, they're, they're talking about people just kind of basically languishing in, in Ochre 5. Um, I've read those, I've read some letters that, that talk about those things. Did you find them to be accurate? There are discrepancies in the reviews that I've done between the letters and other documentation that I've seen. I haven't seen any inmate be disciplined for requesting medical help. The Department of Corrections says 86% of its inmates are now vaccinated. About 450 correction staff have contracted the virus too. As cases were spreading in October, a group of officers at the Draper prison ordered these challenge coins, referring to working there during the pandemic as hell on earth. They weren't sanctioned. They were paid for by officers and I'll leave it at that. They got to go home to their families. They got to choose to be there. That is almost like mocking. That to me is disgusting. After receiving that inmate letter, Gillespie says she reached an employee in the prison infirmary who told her Jerry was there and fine. The next morning, there was a knock on the Gillespie's door. And he said, I drove up this morning from the Utah 
prison to let you know that Jerry passed away this morning and that you can collect his body from St. Mark's. Jerry Gillespie was 48 years old. And I said, Jerry's in the hospital? And he said, yeah. And I said, and he passed away from COVID? And he said, yeah. And I said, so you guys have lied to me for the last three weeks? And he said, I, I don't have any information that we've talked to you. Gillespie, as well as the Bueno family, won an independent investigation of the deaths at the prisons. So does the state senator who chairs the committee with oversight of the Department of Corrections. I think more, more likely we're going to ask, you know, maybe our auditors or the Department of Corrections to, you know, to, to issue a report and kind of tell us what happened. But, you know, um, I, you know, on those types of situations, I do think it's helpful to bring in some people outside of the culture, uh, so outside of the chain of command, who can, who can maybe be more objective. Gillespie is preparing to file a claim, the first step toward a lawsuit, against the Department of Corrections on behalf of herself and the six children she and her late husband shared. She's upset at her husband's death and the conflicting information from the department. I feel like they took my kids' opportunity away to talk to their dad before. And the, the hospital wouldn't have let them in anyway because of COVID procedures, but they could have pulled in a damn TV and let these kids see their dad. And they took that away by saying he was fine when he wasn't. In Salt Lake City, Nate Carlisle, Fox 13 News, Utah.